Okay, welcome back, everyone, to the Coalition for Marriage YouTube channel. I'm privileged to have you joining us. Uh, if you're joining us again, great to see you. If you're joining us for the first time, we are the UK's largest pro-marriage organisation representing tens of thousands of uh, individuals and groups who support this notion of one man, one woman marriage. Of course, other things take place in society. We recognise that. But marriage is that thing which only one man and one woman can do. Uh, and we would support that that needs to be promoted in society for various reasons. Somebody to talk about those reasons uh, with us today, somebody who a lot of you will know and love his writings, uh, his uh, debates, all sorts of things he's done in the media. Reverend David Robertson, uh, who's uh, originally from the Free Church in Scotland, moderator there, is now helping out with various churches and church movements in Australia. David, what a privilege to have you here today. Would you like to say hello to our listeners and our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do want to say hello uh, to the viewers and listeners. I'm, I'm very, very glad that you're watching this, not because you're hearing me, but because it sh shows that you have an interest uh, and, I, and, and you should have an interest because it is fundamental to, to you and to everyone around you. And if you're going to love your neighbour, then you've got to know this stuff. It's a, it's a real privilege to talk to you. I, it's funny because I've read so much of your stuff, but to, to, to talk to you face to face is a real privilege. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, I, don't know if you know, I don't know if you know anything about us. We have a, a kind of supporter base from all faiths and none. Um, and we approach it from a secular evidence base. The idea that marriage between one man and a woman is a good thing, needs to be kept distinct. Uh, for, for very good reasons, very good secular reasons, apart from anything else. Um, but we, we hold to this thing that actually it is only one man and one woman. And all those other things, while they may exist in a liberal democracy, are not marriage. Um, and that seems like that's the new blasphemy today. <laughs> and if you say that, you can't talk to anybody. Um, really yeah, well, I, I, get, I get your stuff, you know, so oh, I do okay. know who you are. Okay. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I, I think that is the argument to use because when I was involved in the same-sex marriage debate, I always used, uh, I mean, basically it was secular arguments. People would say, well, yeah. what, what, you're doing this because you're religious. And I said, ah, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm doing this because I care about other human beings <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that kind of evidence-based things. But there was two things yeah. I would always say. My number one reason for doing this is because of the poor and that freaked them out. And then the other one was, um, and same-sex marriage doesn't exist. So yeah. I just simply said, it's, it's not marriage, it's a civil contract. And I was yeah. greatly helped in that by David Cameron, because I wrote <laughs> his office. I did a debate down in London, and I, it was against his, um, his advisor who drew up the same-sex marriage thing for the, for the UK government. Yeah. And I, it, was an, it was an extraordinary debate we did in, in Kensington. And I wrote him after it. I wrote to David Cameron's office after it and said, you know, what, what's your definition of marriage? And he actually, actually wrote me and said, we're going to redefine marriage for everybody. Mm. And that's what mm. I said they were doing. So I had that in writing. It was just wonderful to have it. Yeah. Say, and, and yeah that, exactly that is amazing. Um, yeah. Because the, the irony is he said it was, it was, it was a conservative idea, but the irony yeah. is it's actually a, uh, a, a uniquely socialist idea, you know, to to disrupt the marriage of one man and a woman goes right back to Engels and, and Marx and all that sort of stuff to undermine the family. Well, I would argue it's it's it is uniquely certainly Marxist, and I would argue if you know your Dostoevsky and your Tolstoy and others that it, the the kind of uh, and also your French revolutionaries, your mm. your Russian revolutionaries, they wanted to destroy marriage, private property, and the church. That was their three. And my argument would be that our, our current um, progressives have exactly the same aims. There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would yeah. say that um, they, they, I mean, anyone who reads queer theory would know this was going. I did a debate with Peter Tatchell, and yeah. um, I, I said to him, Peter, there's no way that you've changed your mind on this. I said, you're opposed to marriage. It's a patriarchal institution that you want to destroy. And I said, so now you're saying you're for same-sex marriage? Yeah. And he looked at me and said, yes. And, and I said, well, hang on a minute, Peter. And then it just hit me. And I said, no, no, I don't think you've changed your view at all. You realize yeah. that if marriage is redefined, it destroys marriage. Yep. And this is the best way you can get your position. And he smiled and said, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, 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 it's and, not about a lot because um, civil partnerships gave everything... It, it, equal yeah. to marriage but it, it was just about the name and to water down we, we've often talked about salt 
you know, if you redefine salt to include things that look a little bit like salt, but aren't salt, well, it, it just ruins everything that happens in the kitchen. Plus, every, you know, a lot of other things in life, too, um, inadvertently. Yeah. And that's, that's not phobic to any other chemicals or compounds. Salt is unique and does a unique thing. And as soon as you water that down with things that look a bit like it, you've lost the plot. Yeah. And so, I mean, and I say to people as well, look, guys, how you use words is really important because in Scotland, mm -hmm. If you ask people in, in you know, opinion polls, if you ask them, do you think we should change the traditional definition of marriage between a man and a woman? Mm. People would say no. The majority of people would say no. Mm. But when you change the question to do you support equal marriage, mm. the majority of people said yes. Now, in a way, you're asking exactly the same thing, but in another mm. thing, you're not. So mm. when someone asks me about equal marriage, I say, well, equal for who? I can't answer the question. Mm. Do you think uh, two brothers should be able to marry? And they, oh, it'll be ridiculous. I say, okay, so you don't mean mm. equal marriage. Mm. So you want marriage mm. with some limitations. Please tell me what the limitations are. And please mm. tell me your definition of marriage. Mm. And then they get stuck. So, I mean, mm. I just, we had Sydney Pride here. And I was saying to the church, you've got to speak out a little bit more about this. So people, you know, most people who are growing up in our education system, you know, anyone under 40 will say, I can't understand how you're against equal marriage. Mm. And I'll simply say to them, tell me what marriage is. And when they can't uh, answer it, yeah. And it's all about the language. You're, and we'll come on to it in yeah. a minute, um, the so-called conversion yeah. therapy, because, again, that's another example where language has been chosen very carefully so as to confuse the issue in the debate um, and, and to reach a particular result. But let me take it all the way back, because uh, okay. a lot of people a lot of people know about you, David. A lot of people. Re you've got millions of people reading your online online work uh, annual, annually, etc. You've got lots of videos out there. Some fantastic debates, as you've said. You're a, a Scotsman in Australia. Just give us a couple yeah. of minutes. What happened there? How did that how did that come about? Okay, I'd been in Scotland for well, I'd been in ministry in Scotland for 30 years plus 20 what well, 33 years, 27 years in Dundee and Robert Murray McShane's church and six years yeah. up in the Scottish Highlands. And what happened was my methodology was um I, I thought the crying need of the hour was evangelism, but through the local church and you know, we went to a church in Dundee that had a handful of people, seven people. I, I always joke that four of them left when I went there, but that's true. Um, and uh, we gradually grew. But my methodology was like a dart player to throw 12 darts at the board, hoping that one would stick. I tried lots of different things. Latterly, most of them were sticking. And so I found myself having a ministry which very much involved being involved with secular media uh, on Help, trying to help other churches. We set up something called Solas, which Andy Bannister now does, which is kind of an apologetics thing. Yeah. I was running a local church that had grown to about 250. We'd planted churches. I was involved in my denomination. And I was just getting worn out. And um, there was push and pull factors about coming here. But part of it was a conversation with Oz Guinness, who said the type of evangelism I do, which is I use um, contemporary cultural issues to proclaim the gospel. Uh, in other words, I use them as connecting things for people. So you, the same say, I mean, the, I, I said before to you that I had done a, um, a talk in West London and I said to the church I was going to, uh, it's an evangelistic event, but I want to do it on same-sex marriage. And they were just like, you know, no way can that be evangelistic. <laughs> but it was a great evangelistic event mm. because half the audience were LGBT activists. Mm. And, you know, they got to hear the gospel. They got, you know, because... Mm. Mm. So anyway, I was doing all of that. And then um, there was stuff going on in Scotland as well. You know, as I say, there were push and pull factors. But I did see a lot of things mm -hmm. that were going on mm -hmm. in the church and in the culture, mm -hmm. which people hammered me for saying it. Like I remember in a podcast 10 years ago saying transgender was going to be the issue. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, people just said I was completely crazy. Well, they're not saying that now. Yep. Uh, and I'm not yep. saying I always got it right. As I said, my methodology was to say things and find out and to think about things in a wider context. Yep. So yep. the Australians uh, asked, City Bible Forum here, asked if I would come and work with them. And I initially said no. And then I thought about it and I thought, do you know, I can't carry on running a local church and uh, doing what I'm doing. Yep. And the bottom line is the Australians were the only ones who asked. Oz was very keen for me to stay for Europe. But mm. Australia is Asia as well, yeah. you know. And yeah, absolutely. I, I find I'm getting on particularly well with the Asians, with the Chinese and the Indonesians and the Koreans and yep. Uh, yep. Thais and so on. It's a so, big world, isn't it? I mean, yep. I mean, another reason I came, to be honest, was I feel that Scotland crossed the point of no return and only 
revival now can change that. Yeah. And I felt Australia wasn't at that stage. I felt Australia, the churches are stronger here. It's Asian as well as being European and, and indigenous. Yep. And I felt they had an opportunity. And I really wanted to come and say, guys, please don't do what we did and go the route we did. Yeah. Um, and maybe that maybe that was a bit grandiose, but yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny because COVID's forced me to do this as well. I, I was absolute and I still am an absolute believer in the local church. Mm. But I found that I've been forced into a wider ministry largely on the internet. You know, it's very, very strange. I have people contact me. I mean, even as uh, just before we, we, we were talking, um, you know, somebody said, I'll be listening to some of your stuff and I'm not a Christian, but, you know, why, why do you think like this and how yeah. can I know God yeah. and stuff, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. I've, I've, I've been forced. I mean, I've got a great face for radio. I, I hate to <laughs> do I hate I hate doing video stuff and Zoom yeah. and all this kind of stuff that we do, but yeah. I've been forced to do it, and and yeah. it's very strange. So, so much more meat I want to get into that that you deal with. Yeah, but just the the, the we flee thing. Where's that from? That comes from the. And I'll give you the short version, which was <laughs> Richard Dawkins wrote a, wrote a book called The God Delusion. Yep, I read it. Wrote a response called The Dawkins Letters. I got loads of abuse on the Dawkins website, <laughs> but I mean, it was like, the, oh, yeah. I mean, there were thousands of posts and. I mean, Dawkins was furious that basically <laughs> I was getting so much attention. Yeah. So he dismissed me and John Lennox and Alastair McGrath. And I think there was one other. He quoted the poet WB Yeats saying, we're like fleas living off a dog's back, which mm -hmm. I thought was great for a guy who wrote a book, which was just Birch and Russell rewritten <laughs> you know, yeah. and was making yeah. millions out of it. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, they, uh, I got banned from the Dawkins website because I was responding on their message board and it, they were, I mean, I got death threats, I got everything, you know, and mm -hmm. Dawkins was furious at, at what this was exposing. So he banned me. And, he, you know, a couple of times I came back under a pseudonym. And then one time I thought, do you know, this, my denomination was called the Free Church of Scotland. Our nickname yep. was the We Freeze. And I figured Dawkins wouldn't know Scottish Presbyterian church history. So I called myself the We Flee, went back right. onto, and I, I survived, I think, about six months before I got thrown off again. They, they worked out it was me and um the weekly just stuck and i, I kind of quite like it it's you know i know it's not the greatest thing in the world but um my aim was always to be as a friend of mine put it david you put a pebble in people's shoes yeah and my aim was always to um irritates the wrong word but to get people to to question and to think and the Weefly, it just stuck, and I've, I've, I've been known as that for the past ten years. It's, it's funny because you left Scott, you thought Scotland had, had crossed the pale, and you went to Australia. Man, there's some pretty wacky things happening in Australia, which we can talk about maybe. Yeah. But let's, there's a few things I want to talk about. So the whole conversion therapy sure. stuff, how that's working out in Australia. Your current talks and works around marriage, of course, that's the, the topic for us really. Uh, and how, and even you know, Carl Truman uh, seems to say that marriage. And, and the debate about marriage is at the heart of the culture war and everything stems from that redefinition of marriage, which is very interesting. Um, but also, uh, perhaps we can touch a little bit on Kate Forbes, because that was all mm -hmm. about marriage, too. And of course, Kate, that's been big in the news. Uh, you know, you, 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 you'd, you'd had an interview, a couple of media interviews, in fact, where you'd, you'd mm -hmm. highlighted the, the ridiculous nature of the questioning that Kate got Whereas the, the the person who eventually won, in fact, had nowhere near such questioning. And if they had have done, the, the answers would have been significantly worse if they were true. Uh -huh. So, you know, tell us a little bit about um, uh, what you think is going on in Scotland now. Is there any hope for Scotland? You've mentioned it's only revival. A little bit of a recap over what happened with Kate Forbes and your current thinking on that. OK, so the, the wider context is this. I think Scotland secularised quicker than any nation in history. Other than Ireland now, I think that what's happened in what I call the civic elites in Scotland, which is only about 5,000 people, but you're talking in um, academia, most of media, most of politics, uh, most of the corporations, that they've, they're all incredibly, uh, people don't like the term woke, I think is a very good way to put it, but let's say progressive. Yep. And I think the church got caught out. The church wasn't prepared. The church wasn't ready. The church mm -hmm. was too inward looking. Um, I think this was inevitable. If you 
if you look at where from the, the, the key decade, it was actually the 1960s. And if you, if we'd listened to Francis Schaeffer mm. and um, actually C.S. Lewis, he saw it coming. So his book, That Hideous Strength, which Melvin Tinker adapted so well, or the idea of it, um, and used the same title. Uh, I, I think it was inevitable. Now, what was happening in the 1970s, by the way, this is tied in with the marriage, is we were moving towards an acceptance of pedophilia, everything. You know, Jimmy Savile didn't come out of nowhere. Yep. And you, you had people like Harriet Harman belonging to the Pedophile Information Exchange and other things like that. And then for some wonderful reason, which I can only attribute to the Lord, by the end of the 1970s, pedophilia was the great sin. But the underlying philosophy behind it was going ahead and marriage was the way that things were to be attacked. And I agree with Carl Truman entirely. Now, in Scotland, I, my, my view is it is the weakening of the church that caused the society to disintegrate so much. And it, the church's inability to speak with a prophetic voice. Now, I, by the way, I think what's happening here in Australia now is churches saying, oh, we need to be prophetic and say what's going to happen. And I'm saying, you're too late. Mm -hmm. Saying what's going to happen when it's already happening. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, well, I'm going to bet on yesterday's football result. No, you can't. It's, yeah, now we've got to offer people hope. But I think what happened in Scotland was that um, the churches declined. I think the churches became quite inward looking. And I think the society was taken over by this a progressive ideology, which is not progressive, it's regressive, it's regressing mm. to a Greco-Roman pagan view of the world. And I think that the key issue, uh, in a sense, it's, it's from marriage. I mean, when we did the same-sex marriage debate, I saw everything stemming from that. But you can include in that some of the aspects of easy divorce. Um, I saw in my work the effects of all this on particularly the poor, so we've the working class shifted very much towards being the benefits class, not entirely, but there was a lot of that. You had guys, I remember one guy in my city, Dundee, saying he had 14 children by nine different women. He said, yeah, so what? The state will pay for it. And those kids, I mean, what a dreadful way for them to be brought up. And I witnessed all of that and saw it happening. And I thought, mm -hmm. no, no, we have to make a stance on marriage because this is the big the the most mm. important thing that people need is a solid mm. family. Mm. And I would also argue, by the way, that from an evangelistic point of view, for churches, most, most people want a solid family. And if the church explains the basis of that, it's a very attractive thing. Mm. You know, and I also think in the early church, it was families who were, you know, saved. Now, that's, first of all, there's nothing to say. That's to say nothing against singles. It's to say nothing. Mm. I mean, I had a church which had, um, several single mothers, for example, and single fathers as well. But not one of them would have said, this is the way I'd yeah. want to be. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. It's, it, was for, it was for them made much more mm. difficult. So yeah. I think what's happened in Scotland was this. Now, Cape Forbes, the, the SNP is a broad church at one level, church. And Cape Forbes is a very, very smart young woman. And in the providence of God, she got foisted into a job because of a scandal uh, as finance secretary, which she did very well. Now, people knew she was a Christian, and they knew she was a real Christian, and they kept trying to trip her up. They kept trying to stop her. The progressives, the Greens especially, I, I regard, you know, I've voted Green. The old Greens forget. The new Greens mm. are, are, I just think, pagan religion, mm. and um, they are much more concerned about things like sexuality, I think, than they are actually the environment, uh, and they could see, Patrick Harvey, the head of the Greens in Scotland, he could see the danger that someone like Kate Forbes was. Mm -hmm. So when she stood to be leader, there was panic amongst the progressives. And, and I'm not using this in a, in a bad way. All hell broke loose against Kate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have mm -hmm. no idea how she stood. She did. It was remarkable that she stood. And I mm -hmm. decided to get involved purely and simply. I wasn't going to get involved before, but I just thought, no. Um, and... Uh, it, it was, it, it's been incredible because they say, what's the phrase? The best disinfectant is light. Sunlight, yeah, that's right. And, and, I, and I think she brought light. And what mm. it's done is exposed the, the darkness at the heart of Scottish culture. And mm. I actually don't see that as a bad thing. I see it as a good thing because it allows those of us who are proclaiming the light to, to offer something 
that is mm. much more attractive. Mm. So mm. I, 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 my, my argument would be that far too many people in the church, especially in the leadership of the church, bought into the lie, we've got a seat at the table. And my mantra always to them was, that's no use mm. if you don't get any say in the menu. Mm. Mm. And you have to start challenging and taking on things. And if you don't, you'll find yourself sidelined. And, and there was way too much compromise right. in yeah. the church. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I've, uh, what can I say? Um, I spoke to somebody a little while ago who said, who said to me, well, I'm, I'm keeping my, my Tinder dry until I reach a high enough office to make a difference. And you think, hmm, I'm not sure that's going to work. You know, and no, it's not going to work. They, people, they're not stupid. Kate, they're not stupid. Yeah, they Kate, know. Kate that. was advised. You know, Kate. She was told just lie, just you know, yeah. just brush it under the carpet, just just dodge the issue like everyone else does. But she didn't do that. She was true to her, to her convictions. So I, what, what I'm, I, I really admire Tim Farron because Tim Farron, when he was liberal leader, did something that was wrong, and he knows that. Yeah. And and a year later. He absolutely apologized for it. You know, he basically, um, he was pushed and pushed and pushed. And eventually he said something that he knew wasn't true. Yeah. And um, he, he compromised, in other words. And a year later, he absolutely said, no, 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 I got this wrong and so on. And I really admire him for mm. doing that. And I think he's a, a, a lovely brother. And he mm. really questioned whether a Christian could be a political leader in the UK. Mm. Mm. I think Kate Forbes stands has shown, yeah. Uh, there, there's some hope. I mean, the fact she got 48% with yeah. all of the SNP hierarchy being against her, yeah. with the election being rigged, being shortened from one month, from three months to one month, it's supposed to be three months. And by the way, yeah. if it had been a week longer, she would have won because all mm. the stuff that's come out now. Um, but I, I, yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. I, I, mm. I thought that was remarkable. So for me, I think a lot of Christians in the United Kingdom are not prepared to accept that Christendom is gone. And by the way, I think Christendom going is a bad thing, not a good thing. Mm. You get quite a lot of middle-class Christians going, oh, it's wonderful, a bit of persecution will do us good. Mm. Well, you're not the ones who are going to be persecuted. You know, so mm. no, it, it, you know, Christendom is bad for the poor. Christ, Christendom going is bad for the country as a whole. You know, the way I put it is this. So, sorry, going back to the marriage thing. I remember... Uh, I'm doing a thing in a bookstore in Glasgow and it was mm. the old Borders bookstores, which mm. closed down and Borders headquarters wanted me to go there because I'd done with the Dawkins letters. It had been, the, the tours had been phenomenal. The number of people who turned up mm. Mm. and so, and they're interested in football. So they told their manager in Glasgow, you have to have me. And I went there and he was raging. <laughs> uh, and he was obviously, I, th I think it was a gay activist anyway. Mm. At the end of the meeting where I do Q&A, so Q&A is what I do a lot, he said, uh, I was speaking about God and science, and he said, I want to ask what you think about homosexuality. And I said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, uh, first of all, you're the manager. You shouldn't be asking me questions. Secondly, mm. I'm not here to speak about that. Mm. And he asked me again, and I said, okay, look, I'll do you a deal. I said, you tell me. Uh, if, if you answer my question, I'll answer your question, providing once it's done, we're done and we get back to the subject. So he said, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, do you think that there is any form of sexuality that is wrong? Now, I, I won't say exactly what he said because he swore and said, you so-and-so, you're a clever so-and-so <laughs> because if I, if I say no, mm -hmm. you're going to say, what about pedophilia or bestiality or something? And if mm -hmm. I say yes, you're going to say, how do you know? And mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm not the only clever so-and-so because that's exactly what I was going to do. So well done. Mm -hmm. And then I explained to him and I said to him, do you know, I'm an Ikea Christian. And what I mean by that is when I go to Ikea, there's a point to this story, by the way. When I go that's to a, Ikea, yeah. I'm, I should I'm, I'm translate totally for useless. Our, if I translate for our listeners, that's Ikea in, uh, in England. Ikea, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I, I you know, I've, I've no practical skill at all if you if i took it to my wife next door she would totally agree and i come back and i'm the kind of guy who unpacks the the you know the the chair or the bookshelf mm -hmm. and i count out the screws and i read the plan and i follow the maker's instructions exactly and i said to him god made us we follow the maker's instructions that's for our good and then i explained the christian position on sex sexuality and marriage and so on 
And, and my final point to him was this. You don't you dare call me a bigot for upholding something that has been the basis of this society for the past 1,500 years. Mm -hmm. And my concern mm -hmm. is this. You are going to overthrow this for something that you do not know what it will bring. But I will mm -hmm. tell you right now, it will bring absolute disaster. And so I will speak against it. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, a significant number of people who were there who weren't Christians spoke to me afterwards and said, we'd never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what we've got to do. And I, I, so my argument is that, you know, you obey the maker's instructions. Yep. God made yeah. us. God made us sexual beings. God made us male and female. You know, who would have thought at that point, which that was about 12 years ago, who would have thought that we would be now living in a country where politicians and academics and lawyers cannot tell you what a woman is? I know it's remarkable. It's even yeah. senior politicians. It's quite remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the problem, yeah. the problem there is you look on and you think, well, if you can't speak truth over something so basic, how can I trust what yeah. you say on any issue at all? You know, yeah. it's quite remarkable. So it is Tower of Babel stuff. So that, you know, the, the, it's the confusion. It's the confusion and the lostness. And that's where the church needs to come in. And that's where like mm. the likes of you guys, mm. Uh, mm. you're, 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 the way that you teach about marriage is very important because you're not going to people and saying, you have to do this because God says so. Mm. What you're doing is you're saying, but this is the way it is. Mm. You know, mm. And we can ask, why is it this way? And that mm. brings us ultimately back to God. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and there's, there's a great secular evidence base. And we've just for people listening, we've, we've just published yeah. another information sheet with, with, um, with just... Uh, you know, secular evidence, which supports yeah. the idea that growing up with a biological mum and dad in a married relationship just gives the best outcomes for adults, kids and society, bar none. And that's, it doesn't, you know, of course, that's on a population base. There will always be examples where something's different on both sides. Of course, there will. Yeah. But on a population base, it's, it works. It's the model that really, really works. And so it should be the model that we really, really promote, not all the other things instead. I mean, the analogy I would use with that is a balanced diet is probably the best thing for most people in terms of eating. There are some people who, if they eat meat only, will do very well and thrive. Yeah. But you don't make you don't you do not use exceptions to make the norm. So tell us a little bit about um, uh, conversion therapy and how that's because we're going through that discussion and debate uh, in the UK, Scotland, a little bit ahead of the curve. I live in Wales myself who are desperately trying to catch Scotland and take that crown for the most progressive part of the UK. Um, but the whole of the UK is looking at this, this idea of a ban on so-called conversion therapy. I know in Victoria, not far from where you mm -hmm. are, um, you know, they've, they've really embraced it to, a, to an extreme degree. And there are people, mm -hmm. you know, waiting to be sentenced for saying simple things from the Bible or, you know, parental advice to children, which is deemed unacceptable now. You're nearer to the situation. Tell us what's going on. I was going to say, I don't do hyperbole. I would never in a million years exaggerate, but um, <laughs> I, I cannot stress how important this is because here's, look, it's a trick. It's a con. It's from the father of lies. So when most of the people listening to this hear the term conversion therapy, yeah. they will think in terms of, people being brainwashed, being forced to watch pornography to turn them straight, having electrodes put to them and so on, mm. right? Mm. I hope all of us would be utterly opposed to that. Yep. When I was yep. in my church in Scotland, um, we had a number of people in my congregation who are gay. I never once said to them, right, I'm going to turn you straight, or this is how, you know. Um, mm. I did say God can change people, and I did, but I said, my problem was, I said to them, I don't define who you are or who I am by sexuality. That is a late 19th century, early 20th century Freudian thing. And I don't accept it. You know, we're talking about behavior. We're talking about. So anyway, the conversion therapy aspect of this, someone like Jane Ozan, who is incredibly dangerous because she and Steve Chalk, and it's so sad that they were former evangelicals mm. that, uh, I mean, they, they say they still are, but they're not remotely evangelical. They want to see people like me prosecuted mm. because their argument is their definition of conversion therapy is not just this horrendous stuff that we talk about. It's praying with somebody. Mm. It's not affirming someone's sexuality. Mm. So 
for example, I was down in Victoria, and Victoria is the worst here, but the others are, ca are catching up or falling behind, as I would say. And I was speaking at a conference, and the young people came up to me and said, man, you're so brave. I said, why? So you go to jail for saying that here. Hmm. And what they've done in Victoria is, so I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. If you, as a parent, refuse to affirm your 13-year-old daughter who wishes to be a boy because of something she's seen on YouTube, including all the treatments, then you're guilty of conversion therapy and you can go to jail. And the penalties are really tough. Um, now, the people who are fighting against that most, uh, amazingly, are a group who used to fight against me a lot when I was at university, and that was the feminists. And now I find myself on the same side as the feminists. Yeah. What, what, they, call, what they call TERFs. But... See, what I said about conversion therapy. So when they talk about conversion therapy, I always say, to, I always ask people, like, what do you mean by conversion mm. therapy? Mm. And I would say to them, can you name one practice that is going on in Wales or in Scotland yep. or in England yep. that you would want to ban right now, yep. that it's not yep. already illegal? And that's the important point. Thing? That isn't already yeah. illegal for being wrong. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. And, 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 and then I would say to them, I would ask something like, do you think that... Um, using genital or um, physical man um, manipulation or uh, you know surgery to convert someone is wrong and if they would say oh absolutely i would say well in that case you've got to be opposed to transgender conversion therapy mm. you know because that's the conversion therapy that's going on which is absolutely appalling and it's far and, and the other point is this isn't look yes there will be some church somewhere um, which will someone be trying to cast demon out of someone because they say they're gay, right? Yeah. That yeah. you you there'll be someone somewhere who says, "I'm going to send you to a psychiatrist so we can get you sorted out in terms yeah. of." Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about. What the the reason why this is the this is the current more than euthanasia. I thought euthanasia would be, but the reason why this is the current cause celebre of the progressives is. They know that the only th reason for doing this is to attack Christianity. It's got nothing to do with helping people who are being harmed. It has got everything to do with trying to silence people like you and me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we've got to be really, really aware of that. You know, I, there, there was a case, as you know, in England where the, the uh, government's legal officers advised that certain parts of the Bible would no longer be acceptable in contemporary yeah. society. And once you've got the state telling you we're going to edit the Bible, you're in big, big trouble. So your religious freedom is gone. And that's the point about conversion therapy. Conversion therapy is designed to take away religious freedom. But what almost nobody realizes is that religious freedom is the basis of all the other freedoms we have in our culture. And if you take away religious freedom, that's the trunk gone. You'll lose all the branches. You'll lose freedom of speech. You'll lose freedom of movement and work and everything else. And, and, I, and by the way, I think that's already happening. So conversion therapy is something that has to be absolutely fought by the churches and yeah. not just by the churches. I mean, we've got allies. There are people who are not religious, who realize, yeah. who see the harm. Um, I find it rather bizarre that um, former left-wing groups, communists like, for example, Stuart Waiton yeah. up at the University of Aberté in Dundee, um, who's now doing an education movement, or spiked, you know, um, who I would disagree strongly on their abortion stance, yep. but on most other things, I would agree with them. They're yep. on our side when it comes to this issue. Yep. And yep. Uh, I, I, I think th this is absolutely not a time for the church to be silent. Because you, you've touched on a couple of things I wanna, don't want to leave behind because mm -hmm. they're really important. So the idea of, of um, uh, align with the feminists. Now, some people are going, oh, what do you mean? But actually, you, know, you look at some of the, the modern feminists, we've, we've spoken about Louise Perry's book, uh, on this channel mm -hmm. you know the, the idea that she's coming out and lots of other people are coming out and saying actually the best thing a woman can do is is find a husband get married and stay married and that's the mm -hmm. best thing for her and you think well yeah that kind of makes sense and it's it's not about patriarchy it's not about possession and ownership it's actually about you know the benefits of marriage that they bring to couples as, as well as societies it's a really good idea and the whole idea of of women you know promiscuously going about living their lives uh, sleeping with as many it's actually not what most women want and it isn't good for most women and it isn't good for society and that's what we mean when we say you know actually a lot of feminists are agreeing with us
And sorry, well, can I just come in with that? Because I think this is really important because you see, it's, it's, it's again language. So we use the term progressive. It's not progressive. Mm. It's regressive. Mm. And it's going mm. back to a, a, a pre-Christian Greco-Roman yeah. pagan view of the world. Yeah. And in that world, women were <laughs> oppressed more than any other group. Yeah. And yeah. we are going back to that world. So it's interesting that in the transgender thing just now, it's all about women being denied their spaces, women being denied their freedoms, and mm. men who want to identify as women who are taking that away. Nobody's mm. going around saying, what is a man? Mm. You know, nobody's... It, this, it, 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 the transgender movement is a male-dominated movement. It is very misogynistic. And that's why we identify with feminists. And I think some of the feminists... Mm. By the way, the other way I would identify with them... Someone like, um, what they call her, Posey Parker, is it Kelly J? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Keen. yeah. She came over here and she was abused, attacked and everything. But do you yeah. know this? She said something that I thought, I wished every Christian leader would hear it. She said, no, I succeeded because I came to expose the darkness. Mm. And I thought, you have got courage. Mm. Mm. You have got courage. Mm. You know, mm. now I will disagree with many of these feminists on, on, on <clears throat> A lot some of key yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's a kind of co-belligerence thing. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Wh what I would say, what I would say is simply this is JK Rowling has shown more courage than the vast majority of church leaders in the UK. Mm. You know, mm. and, and and you know, we we do this, or we can't say this in case we upset somebody, you know. And yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. I remember someone from the BBC coming to see me and saying, Look, David, um, I want to get you on my show. I want you to do and I said, why? And he said, because you speak for half the people in this country and they're the mm. half of the people that we don't speak for. We're supposed to be diverse, but we're not. Mm. Mm. And he says, all the religious leaders we get on here, they all just go along with what we say. Mm. And mm. I, I, you don't have to be a kind of right-wing nutcase or a left-wing nutcase. You don't have to be eccentric and weird just to speak mm. the truth in love in a way that people go, what? Okay, that and makes sense. That, that again is part of our problem. That we've got such a, a polarized type of debate going on. You, if if yeah. you don't agree with this progressive view, you are a right wing nutcase. You're a Nazi. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. no, the Nazis did some really bad things to an awful lot of people. That's not what this is. This is having a sensible conversation based on evidence and discussing what the best way forward for society is. That's not what yeah. that was. And and it cheapens that. It really cheapens yeah. that when you when you when you call just rational debates something as awful as that, you know, because you've got nowhere to go with your language when something as awful as that actually happens in that case. Yeah. And social media hasn't hasn't helped with that. But on the other hand, I mean, I use social media a lot. Mm. Um, uh, but what and sometimes I've done it badly, you know, and I've had to learn from my mistakes. And yep. I mean, the Lord's preserved me. I do have to say that he's, he's preserved me because <laughs> there are things that I could have said that, you know, you're never forgiven for. You no. know, and, and it, it never I, goes I away. It, That's right. Yeah, I, I think it's possible to be robust, but not to be o offensive and so on. And and I think the trouble is that a lot of our within churches now, where we're operating in a paradigm that's fifty years out of date, where we think, well, we'll go and be nice, and um, people will be reasonable and so on. No, people won't be reasonable. That's not mm. how this works. Mm. We mm. we are at a stage where we have to be able to show where the darkness is mm. and so i always want to take people okay you believe this i want to hear what you're saying tell me where this ends up tell me where mm. this goes mm. tell me how this mm. affects the poor tell me how this affects yeah. children already the progression seems to be so you've got well we've re we've redefined marriage because it's a social construct we're redefining sex and gender because that's a social construct well we're now moving on to is age a social construct you know can kids consent to anything well, surely, you know, if they can consent to having their, you know, private parts removed, they can consent to using those private parts with other people if they want to. And all yeah. of a sudden, you, you know, it's going in a very bad direction. So your next two things that are coming, well, first of all, polygamy is coming and it's basically here. Mm -hmm. Pedophilia is definitely coming. Pedophilia will be defined as a sexuality. And it's definitely coming. You've already got, and I knew this anyway, Peter Tatchell was arguing, well, if it's with consent... You know, mm. now it's funny, you can't consent to conversion therapy as an adult, but as a child, you could consent to, you know, transgender mm. and so on. But mm. there was a fascinating article from, I think her name is Billick. It might even be Jennifer Billick. And she opened my eyes to something that I, I kind of, kind of knew, but didn't, wasn't able to articulate. 
And she explained something that I think is absolutely spot on. Transgender is about mm. transhumanism. Mm. And it's that it, it, it will lead to that because the idea is the Gnostic one, again, from the New Testament age, to divorce the body from the spirit or, and, and from the emotions and everything else. And to make mm. the body um, a kind of commercial part. And she pointed out that it's a lot of big corporations, big pharma, who, you know, and she was talking about things like surrogacy and other things like that, that your body's for sale, your body can be mm. manipulated. If you have a mental disorder, then they treat your body because mm. your body is dispensable. And their ultimate aim is to have humans, you know, this, if you read someone like Noel Harari and, and people like that. And so this never stops. I mean, mm. I, one of the reasons that same-sex marriage got passed or like the transgender stuff, all the politicians go, oh, it's just a small group and we do this, mm. that'll be fine and everyone will be okay. No, 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 no. Mm. This mm. is going to mm. continue and continue and continue. Mm. Mm. And, you know, I was mocked for talking about the slippery slope. And we are way, way further down the slope than, any, than anything I suggested. Yeah. And it's also slow and so gradual. You just, I mean, like you say earlier on, it's remarkable to think that in 2023, we've got leading politicians who cannot say what a woman is and the difference yeah. between a man and a woman. And you just think, wow, that came along quick. Yeah. And I'll tell you what else came along quick. People defending teenage, we have a hospital here in Sydney that does, mm. uh, that chops girls' breasts off. Now, you could take any conversion practice in theory being practiced by any mm. church. It doesn't come anywhere near that. No. And yet no. people go, oh, this is health care. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you'll see other, other things that's happening that you'll, you will move to involuntary euthanasia. That's another thing that mm. will happen. All of this because that's consistent. Now, when, mm. when I say consistent, in actual, in actual reality, this ends up being mega confused. So my argument is we need to say to people, the, the, the key issue here is not theology, it's anthropology. What is a human being? Yeah. And we have the best story about what a human being is. Because mm. I can look at a drunk lying in the street. I can mm. look, I worked for an organization for a while, um, voluntary, which was then known as the Scottish Spastics Council. Now I think it's a much more correct name, Capability mm. Scotland or something. Mm. And I saw the most severely disabled people, brain damaged mm. people. Mm. And I look say, no, no, you're made in the image of God. I mm. look at the tiny child, you're made in the image of God. I look at people of different races, you're made in the image of God. And all that flows from that, and it gives a dignity to humanity. You are not a cockroach. You are not a yeah. slug. You are not, mm. as Bertrand Russell said, a blob of carbon floating from one meaningless existence to another. Mm. And we've got that message. The trouble is when the church gave in on marriage and stuff like that, we demean that message. You're kind of answering the, 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 my last two questions, really. One which is, yeah. was, what, why are we here? And then the last one, which is, where do we go from here? The why are we here? Your, your, your claim is that really it's to undermine Christianity. Because if you look at those 5,000 elites you talk about in Scotland, uh -huh. most of them are happily married. Yep. It's uh -huh. the poor people yeah. that are suffering the rhetoric, not the rich people. And that's across the board. So they know what what's good for society because they're doing it themselves so and, and they know what a woman is and they know what a man is they're not stupid so why are they lying why are they doing this and your argument is it's purely to undermine christianity but then you think well do they really want i mean surely they must be able to see the chaos that will ensue no they, they are they are that hubristic they think that remember when tony blair came to power i'm not blaming him for particularly for this mm. but i remember the um, it was Dream's song that was played all the time as the theme, Things Can Only Get Better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. And it's, yeah. it's what's his name? Gray, the, the uh, atheist philosopher who has a book called Black Mass, in which he talks about the utopianism of the Enlightenment, which led to Nazism and communism and elsewhere. And these people are utopians. They think if we mm. get our way, society will mm. be great. Right. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. So they need someone to blame. In Nazi Germany, they blame the Jews. In 21st century Britain, they will blame they will blame evangelical Christians or or, or conservative Catholic Christians mm. because they have to have someone to blame. Yeah. Now, my argument about why we've gone here, I, I don't think they've even thought it through that much. I mean, these are people who have power. You, I mentioned, uh, I think it was it was either George Bernard Shaw or Burton. No, it was Burton Russell. Who it was Burton Russell who in, in his book Why I'm Not a Christian, which Dawkins just riffed off, as far as I'm concerned. One of the things that stand me about it was he objected to 
um, female teachers being virgins because he basically saw schools as a place, you know, you, 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 and this is where we're going, by the way, this is why all this drag queen stuff is so important because our schools are becoming social indoctrination centers yeah. and it won't stop there. They are becoming grooming centers, mm. you know, and that's where the harm comes in for, now that's not to say that, you know, to say, all gay people are grooming. No, or all transgender. No, there's lots of there's lots of uh, heterosexual people who do that. But it's to say, once you remove the biblical restraints, you open up this world of chaos and harm in which the weakest, and that is children, get harmed the most. Mm. So that's why coming back to 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 what you guys are doing, the most important thing for society in the United Kingdom is for to have stable families and stable marriages without that the, the marriage that that philosophy of marriage is has been the bedrock of western society for the past 1500 plus years mm. you remove that i was going to say well maybe i should say the glue you remove that glue things will fall apart and yeah. I, my argument has always been that, that was the case i think we're now seeing the proof of that and what we are now calling people to do is to recognize um, this. And by the way, you, you will know the statistics better than me, but the last time I looked at it, I think I saw that, uh, and I'm thinking in, in Scotland and elsewhere, but I, it was something like 40% of people in what they call DE social class, in other words, the mm. poorest, were married. 80% mm. in AB. Mm. But it was the ones in A, B who are teaching, oh, don't worry about marriage. Yeah. And one of the reasons is this, that the rich can afford to have mistresses. And the rich mm. sometimes can even afford to have broken marriages, in, at least in financial terms. Mm. You know, mm. but the poor can't. And that's where the real harm comes in. So yeah. if you've got, in one school I was in, in one class, if I remember rightly, it was like, 18 out of the 20 kids in that class did not come from stable homes. Well, they're going nowhere. No matter what you do in education, they are going yeah. nowhere. Mm. And it's, it was a teacher said to me, you know, that she was off two days a week with stress because she couldn't cope with mm. the class. And she wasn't allowed to expel any of the kids. And it was all entirely about just babysitting them. Mm. And I just what, a, what a, I mean, I use this language advisedly. What a hellish way to bring up children. Yeah. And our culture yeah. does that because it's neglected the maker's instructions about marriage. How do we how do we grapple for some light, for some air here? Where do we where do we go? Forward, backward, sideways? What on earth you're an intelligent man, insightful man. What do we do? Oh. Well, I wish I knew, but I, I would suggest this. So there's a guy uh, called Patrick Parkinson here in the University of Queensland who's been very good on domestic violence and he's done a lot of stuff on marriage and things. And I think what you guys do is really important. We need to provide the evidence about marriage. The, you know, the, we need, I think we need the kind of Jordan Peterson type stuff where he provides brilliant analysis but has no solutions. That's my mm. argument about mm. his posi mm. position. And he also supports same-sex uh, marriage, which, is, which he doesn't. But he argues, because if you listen to his yeah. talks on marriage, which are really, really good, but he's then got some yeah. mates who are kind of in same-sex relationships. And so it's, oh, well, you yeah. know, I can see that for this, that. You know, yeah, mm. yeah. So no, he's. So I would argue, in some senses, he's as confused as anybody. But mm. what I would say is, you're getting a lot of this critique of the culture coming from non-Christians. So um, gay atheists like Douglas Murray is pretty mm. perceptive. You know, my view is what yeah. we should do is we should learn to understand our culture, and then we should apply the hope of the gospel. So there's a danger you can mm. be all doom and mm. gloom. You can say this is terrible. We're going. My mm. here's here's where I'm going. I'm saying we are regressing to a Greco-Roman pagan view of the world. But it was in that world that the gospel first flourished. Mm. So mm. we have to, without retreating into some, you know, some kind of Christian, sub-Christian um, culture, I think the, the, the key areas for me is we need Christian education. So we do need Christian schools. Um, you, we, 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 that, that, I personally think we should have a Christian university in the United Kingdom. I think we need Christian mm. politicians to stop playing the game and just to speak up. And, you know, learn from Kate Forbes and Tim Farron and others. Yeah, and uh, yeah. to be fair, Jacob Rees-Mogg, I mean, 
when, yeah. when he gave that answer to abortion on ITV in that interview, it was just yeah, yeah. it's very, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I think that um, I think we need to be very careful not to equate Christianity with a particular political viewpoint as yeah. well, because then you'll just get written off as being usually right wing or because in yeah, America, yeah, yeah. if you're, you know, if you're evangelical Christian, yeah. you're supposed to be Republican. But, but you can be, you can be socialist, you can be socially conservative and economically, um, you know, labor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah well, that, well, that's, that's me. That's I mean, I would, yeah, I would, yeah. 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 And, but, but that's how I would describe myself, but, mm. oh, and they still call me a fascist, but never mind. <laughs> yeah. the, the, but what I would say is politics is not our solution. But I would say the big thing for Christians is we have to model in our own churches, in our own communities, and in our own marriages what it's like. Absolutely. And then we yeah, can go and say yeah. to people, listen, yeah. my marriage is not perfect, but it's possible to mm -hmm. have a marriage according to God's standards Great. and f families in that way. And then we care, you know. For the widows, for the orphans, for single moms, single dads, all that kind of mm. stuff. You know, mm. I, I, I would argue this: we 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 show love and care for homosexual people. I, as I said, I had homosexual people, and uh, I had a transgender person in my congregation over thirty years ago. Well, the church is there for sinners. Let's make that quite clear. Yeah. You know, so yeah. everyone and, and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that that's you know, hey ho, we're all the same from yeah. that from that perspective so you, you raised a couple of uh, interesting points so, so douglas murray again i really admire his, and i've read his all his, his recent popular works i think they're profound yeah. in, in in the way they press it they're prescient they identify the cultural problems you you also tweeted i think something recently that you know you you cannot be a progressive conservative or, or something to that to that ilk and i it was mm -hmm. conservative with a small c and that's one of my because it's almost like um conservatism with a small c embraces it's almost like the trans is bad but you know gay marriage well, we're okay with that and you think mm, i'm not sure conservatism i'm not sure that's compatible with conservatism myself you know outside of the discussion as to the degree to which you know uh, same-sex people have um civil partnerships etc etc another discussion yeah but it almost seems to me that it's difficult to go forward with a, a, a conservative, with a small c, socialist identity if it also embraces the thing which has unpicked it from the bottom up. Yes. So my, my personal view is that the worst prime minister in uh, British history since the Second World War, since before the Second World War, is David Cameron. Mm. Because I think he regards as his greatest achievement same-sex marriage. Yeah. I regard it as the most destructive thing he could possibly have done. Mm. And I think we're seeing the effects of that. Mm. And mm. if you're in the Bullingdon Club, it may seem all like a jolly wheeze and very fair and everything else. But mm. in reality, I see it played out in the, in the housing estates and amongst mm. young and children. And it's devastating. Not on that issue, not so much because of the homosexuality thing, but because of the undermining of marriage. Because yeah. in order to have same-sex marriage, marriage had to be redefined for everyone. Absolutely. Moving away yeah. from being a covenant between a man mm. and a woman in the sight of God. So it's, it's moved to being a civil contract. Uh, uh, and my argument, by the way, is the state can have as many civil contracts as it wants. I would, I would disagree with them, but they can do mm. that. But the state cannot redefine marriage. And in that mm. sense, we are the mm. ultimate rebels. When people ask me, Dave, mm. what do you think of same-sex marriage? I, say, I just say it doesn't exist. And, and, and I don't know if you've read Stephen McCoy's book, um, A Biblical Approach to Social Ethics or something like that, because he's, again, he's, he, he picks up your point that actually the churches need to start speaking out on this. You know, you are the salt of the world. You know, yeah. if, if the salt loses its saltiness, if you're not saying anything and doing anything, forget the whole game. You know, you yeah. well, would anyone in the church for yeah, would anyone in the church, for example, say we shouldn't speak out about racism? Mm. Well, we should. Of course we should. Racism is wrong. If I, I mean, I remember in Dundee, uh, we saw a Pakistani boy being beaten up and we ended up having to, you know, we, we really, we actually started a whole ministry out of that because we were so upset by what we saw. And I'm saying, of course we should speak up about racism, but you don't just speak up about the mm. things that the society agrees with. Mm. You have to speak up especially about the things mm. that society doesn't agree with mm. and is causing just as much, if not more harm. Mm. Listen, I know you've got to go. It's such a privilege to talk to you. Genuinely is. I'd love to stay in touch. I know you're a busy man, but um, I think, you, I think you've got, 
you, I think you've got a role which is going to be more significant, as, even than, than it has been as time goes forward, because because um, you know everything you do and say is right on the button. So thank you very much. No, thank you. Really appreciate it. All God right. bless you. Take mate. care. God bless. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye.